So now let's talk more about the normal cumulative distribution function. Uh, so I've, I've written or drawn another PDF here. And what I want to do is draw the CDF below it and then show how the two are related and show how we get our probabilities from the CDF and use them in revenue management. So let me, uh, let me draw this down here. So I want a CDF below the PDF. And let me see if I can get a Y axis here. Okay. And let's draw a mean. So the mean is right about, not right about, it is at the midpoint of the distribution and we'll call that mu. Okay, PDF, and this is a graph of the PDF. And to get the CDF, we integrate that function. And if we integrated this function from negative infinity to positive infinity, so way out here to positive infinity, that would integrate to one. The total probability is one. If we want to find the probability of uh, certain events occurring, so in this case, the probability that x, so the value of a random variable drawn from the distribution is less than some a, then we would find the area under the curve less than that a, right? And that would be the probability that x is less than equal to a. Now let's show that on the CDF. So down here we have the CDF and we're going to show this integral here. We're going to graph this integral. So when we wanted to find this probability of x being less than or equal to a, we found the area of this curve. Now we're going to graph that area. So let's say that probability, uh, this is where my drawing skills will be challenged. Um, I want to draw a curve that looks similar to the PDF up and to the mean. So we're going to draw this, oh, something like this. And I'm going to show this to you in, um, in PowerPoint where it's drawn out nicely, but just to illustrate it here. Let's say the uh, value of this area is some p, some p. Okay, and we'll just draw that here. Well, this this area would map down to this point on the CDF and it would correspond to some probability that X is less than A. Similarly, if we said X is less than uh, B, you know, you'd have this total area here, this area plus this area, and you would find a point on the CDF that gives us the probability of X being less than uh, B. And at this point, at the midpoint of the distribution where uh, you're at mu, the probability that x is less than mu is always going to be 0.5 because the distribution is symmetric. Half of the distribution lies to the left of the mean, half of it lies to the right. So at this point, and I'm not drawing this too great here, but at this point where uh, you're at the midpoint, the probability that x will be less than mu is 0.5. Once, once you reach that midpoint and go beyond it, then x is going to be something, uh, excuse me, the probability that x is going to be less than, say, c is going to be something something greater than uh, 5. So let's see, p, p, um, pc is something greater than 5. And this is how we, this is how we get our probabilities. We don't, uh, we don't use the PDF directly we take the CDF, which is derived from the, the, from the PDF. Um, we're integrating the PDF to get this graph of the CDF. And then we read the probabilities off of the CDF. So as we get all the way out to the, to the tail end of the distribution, this, uh, this curve will approach one asymptotically, just like this tail approaches one. So there would be, my scale isn't working out too well here, but I'm gonna show you this in a, in, in PowerPoint in a second, but so the you know the uh, the range of the CDF is you know zero probability all the way up to one, just like the integral from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity is one. So um, yeah, let me let me switch over to PowerPoint and show this to you um, a little bit more uh, a little. So here I just want to show you these same graphs in uh, PowerPoint so you can see them when they're drawn correctly. Uh, I, I, 
created this graph in Excel using the normal PDF function. Um, and then below it, I graph uh, using the CDF function in Excel, the, the CDF that corresponds to this PDF. In other words, the CDF with the same parameters of this PDF. And then drawing the mean at zero, uh, I happen to choose mu of zero here and uh, some standard deviation, probably one, I don't, I don't really remember. Um, but you can see just as we did in the uh, drawing video, sorry, let's get my pen working here, that the probability when, um, when you're at the mean, the probability that X is less than mu is gonna be 0.5 and you know below that, when you're on the left side of the mean, the probability is going to be less than 0.5 and on the right side greater than 0.5. And when you're at this tail end of the distribution, the probability approaches one. So you can see that um, the how easy it is to derive probabilities from the PDF if you have the CDF. So really what we use in revenue management is the CDF or actually the complement of it, which I'll talk about in just a second. But when you want to know, if all you want to know is the probability that X is less or equal to some A, then you simply find that A. So if A is 2, right, you just find that probability on the CDF and you have your answer. So uh, the CDF is a very nice um, way of finding simple probabilities. Now, if you had to do something like find the probability of uh, this area, then you can't just read it off the CDF, but you can use the CDF to find that. Now in revenue management, it turns out we, we don't even need to do something that complicated. All we are doing is finding probabilities uh, greater than A. So instead of using the PDF, we use something called the survivor function, survivor function, and it's one minus the CDF which is the same as saying the probability of X being greater than A. So I'm gonna show you this, but what we'll do for our, our revenue management applications is we're gonna, we're gonna flip this CDF around and what we really wanna know, X in our case is gonna be demand. We wanna know when the demand is gonna be greater than some value. Here, this is like saying the probability that the demand is, being, uh, is gonna be less than some value. Uh, but we'll get to that in uh, the next video. So the last thing I want to point out is just the uh, the uh, one more one more item on the relationship between these two curves. So we said that the CDF is a graph of the integral of the uh, uh, of the PDF. So as you're integrating the PDF, you get these uh, these values, and then you you know so the PDF would be um, excuse me the integral would be some area under the curve and that corresponds to some point. Well, it turns out that you can't actually integrate the PDF. That function, the integrals don't exist. So you have to use some approximation. And those approximations are already been done for us in, in statistics books and certainly in, in computer programs. And those approximations correspond to z-scores. And this is how we all learned how to find probabilities in statistics class. You look in the back of statistics books and they give you these z-scores that correspond to different areas under the curve because the integral doesn't actually uh, exist. So that's where the z-scores come from is somebody's gone through and approximated these areas using you know, diff different types of series and you know, taking, taking um, you know, smaller and smaller portions of these areas and then approximating what the true area is. And it comes pretty close. Uh, so, so instead of using um, true integration, the z-scores, uh, which are represented on the CDF, um, are actually approximations. The other thing is, let's see, if you, if you think about the integral as being the antiderivative, then you can similarly think about the PDF as being the derivative of the CDF. So if the, if the CDF is the integral of the PDF, then the PDF is the derivative or, or the graph of the derivatives of the, um, of the CDF. So if you take the slope of the curve of the CDF at this point on the curve, 
that slope is going to be zero. So if you graph that slope, you're at zero here. As you move along the curve, you're going to, let's see, I think I have these drawing in here. Yeah. Um, so as the, as the curve starts to turn up, then the derivative starts turning positive. So the, the slope of this derivative is some positive number. So we get some positive number corresponding to the slope. So somewhere, somewhere around here, the slope of this curve is some positive number which corresponds to um, this x-axis over here. As you go further along the curve, well, you get this uh, second der derivative effect. So the first derivative, the slope of the curve is still positive, but it is turning, uh, so it's increasing, but increasing at a decreasing rate. So the second derivative is negative. So you're still positive, but at some point, wherever that inflection point was where you turned from positive, you know, a positive uh, first derivative and a positive second derivative, to a negative second derivative, you get this inflection point, and that's where you get the height of the PDF. And you could continue along uh, and find that you know the derivative eventually gets back to zero. So that's just the sort of the calculus relationship between the two curves. So the last thing I want to show you are these Excel graphs that I've been using to uh, illustrate the the two functions and just point out how the shapes of the curve change with different parameters. So the graphs I've been using were the standard normal with mu of zero and sigma of one, and we got our probabilities from the CDF down here. I should say CDF. Um, if we change the standard deviation, the, the mean doesn't change, of course, so the center point doesn't change, but the shape of the CDF changes quite a bit. So the probabilities that you get from the CDF with a different standard de deviation, of course, are gonna be quite different. Uh, similarly, as you increase the uh, standard deviation, you get these different shapes of curve. And of course, as you change mu, the, sh the curve shifts. And if I could shift this red line, it would also move to the, to the midpoint and you still have that same relationship where, uh, you know, at, at the midpoint of the distribution, the probability of x being less than mu would be uh, 0.5. Uh, so mu would be uh, three here. But uh, the thing I want to really impress upon you is these are the only, these two parameters, mu and sigma, completely define these functions, these distributions, and completely define the probabilities that we'll use in our optimization models. And we, when we talk about forecasting in later videos, we're gonna see that while we're forecasting demand, what we really want is the, the distribution of demand. So what we feed into our optimization, we don't put in a, a forecast that uh, we expect a certain number of people to arrive. We input the, the two parameters, mu and sigma, if you're using a normal distribution, and then the optimization model calculates the expected values from those probabilities. So, so it's really critical that we get these two parameter estimates correct. Um, that's the whole point of forecasting, is to get these two parameters correct. And we'll get these for a, a, a large number of different levels. So we might have one distribution for uh, people who want to travel from New York to Miami in the winter at a $100 fare, another distribution for those same folks at a $120 fare. There are many, many different parameter estimates that go into the uh, optimization model, but for each one of those levels, all you're feeding are these two parameters.